hamstrung as what we can actually present today, so I spent the better part of last night and this morning rewriting it. The data hasn't been officially released yet. We have to wait until our, our co-conspirators say it's okay to present the data. Um, so a lot of the stuff, we'll, we'll give you a lot of background on how we collected the data. I'll have a couple screenshots of some of the tests and the pilot tests that we did. And um, one or two blow-ups of an area that we did do that, that kind of show past data and what we collected. Uh, a little background on CRA, formed up in Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario in 73. Frank Wilbers had an engineering firm in 75. In 76, they, they formed CRA. Uh, a lot of the offices, the first concentration, uh, the first ring was around the Erie and Lakes, Erie and Ontario. Um, in the mid-90s, we started to expand out down to the south. Uh, West Coast came on board in the early 2000s. And we just completed purchase of uh, five or six companies down in the southeast. Um, I've been up, to the, up into the tar sands up at Fort Mac, working in the uh, projects up there. So right now we have 100 plus offices, mostly in North America, with about 3,000 employees. Um, when I started in 1990, we had about 210 employees in five offices. So it's a, a nice little growth over the last uh, 25, 35 years. The Niagara Falls office got our start with Love Canal. Uh, our office is about two miles away from the site. Um, when the CRA office opened in 76, we had about four employees servicing Occidental Chemical Site. Uh, we had a very harsh winter of 76, 77. We had about you know, 200 inches of snow. All that snow melted. You were there shoveling, right? Um, and everything came back up through the storm drains up in everybody's backyards. Frank Rovers came down just about every day. Uh, he was working for Oxy. He was also working for DEC at the time. So at that time, he's, he's getting paid by both companies. Um, DEC said, well, you got to make a decision. Either you're working for us or you're working for Oxy. More work in the private sector, more money. So we started working for Oxy. And uh, Occidental said, OK, we have to design a cap here. Have you done it before? Yes. All right, design a cap. Frank drove around the corner of the payphone, called Waterloo, and said, we need to design a cap. Has anybody done it before? No. Okay, you have two hours to figure it out. I'll be there. And Frank drove back and forth up and down QEW for about two years and finalized the cap. And right now it is probably the safest spot in Niagara Falls because we know it's there. We know where it's at. We monitor it continually. Um, probably um, it would be another good data presentation of uh, boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of data that we have. A lot of the... Uh, I run the GIS and the metrology department in Niagara Falls. We do a lot of data collection with the iPads. Um, we're getting in with the unmanned space vehicles. We'll be working probably with Bill down in one of our sites in Tucson. And we do a lot of data presentation in 3D. And then here's uh, the new thing that I've been running, um, a lot of laser scanning. And we're, we're trying to start to incorporate that into a GIS data collection, just put the laser scanner in the back of the truck with the GPS enabled, drive up and down the streets, and instead of walking, you can actually drive down the street, collect everything, then go back in the office and say, okay, there's your stop sign, there's your hydrant, and it will all be geotagged because you have that GPS input. Now we get into the actual presentation. Here's the, uh, the team, uh, the Environmental Defense Fund. They underwrite a lot of this program, and we're doing a lot of work for the American Gas Association. So you can probably figure out who we're doing the work for. I just can't tell you. So two two methods that we use to collect the data. And we have the we have the van on the earlier slide, um, just tricked out with all sorts of monitoring equipment. Just drive up and down collecting data. We also use a tracer uh, method on the right. And in that scenario, you go to a gate station, you have your surrogate. You release it, you drive your van up and down, you find that tracer element. And if you find the trace and you find the methane, you kind of can assume that you have a leak at that station. So this is again just going over it. Um, we, we use sulfur hexafluoride as our trace. It's, it's one of those elements that's not really in the atmosphere. But it, it's very easily to be recognized. And the, uh, the amounts that we were measuring it were in the parts per trillion. We could probably get down to about 10 parts per trillion with our equipment. So it's, uh, it, it proved to be a very good test element when we're trying to map out the methane leaks. Um, 
this is what we equip our van with. It's a, it's a very reliable unit, used a lot on the, uh, on the boating industry. We like the idea that not only will it give us positional data, but it will give us wind speed and wind direction. And that's very important if you're driving down and you have a leak, you know, a mile and a half, two miles away. If you know your wind direction, you can actually back calculate where your release point is. And just the idea that if it's for the boating environment, you know it's going to be rugged, you know it's going to be weatherproof. Uh, we probably drove about 12,000 miles across the country this summer, so it, it held up really nicely. The um, tech support at Airmire is very good. Um, the, the software and the telogs that we use to pipe in all the data, to stream it in all together, proved to be very, um, very easy to use. Um, even, even I was able to program it. So they're very good units if anybody has a, a mobile mapping scenario coming up. So this is our test. So the, uh, the airport on the right is the Niagara Falls Air Base. And the, you, you see the blue line, and the, what that's measuring is background. And background across the North American continent is about two parts per million methane. So wherever you go, you're, you're two. If you're going down in Texas where there's a lot of mining and, and gas exploration, you're probably closer to two and a half, three. But a good rule of thumb is two parts per million. So we drove around, drove around, and then you kind of see as we're heading back up to the northeast, we get these peaks. And what we have in the, in the one loop there, we have the, uh, the landfill just off of 190. And then we get another release um, just to the northeast of it. So there's our source. There's our wind direction. So obviously we have the wind blowing across the source, that's why we get our peaks. But we couldn't figure out why we got that peak to the right on the other side of the uh, intersection. So there's our landfill. So here is our other leak. And what we determined was there is an underground pipeline there. And it's just, it's releasing enough that we're picking it up with our, with our van. And we went back and tested it in there. There's a, just a little bit of a leak under, under the uh, under the grass there. And those of you from Buffalo, this is not a source of methane. <laughs> but when, when, we're putting the, uh, when we're putting the equipment together, we would have the guys in the van calibrating it, and we'd always have people out in front of the van where the, uh, where the sensors are. And the guy in the van would yell at us because it would actually pick up your breath as, as you're talking. The sensor is so fine that it's picking up the, uh, your, your exhalation. And so we had to make sure that as they're calibrating the instrument, nobody else is in the back garage, none of the fans are blowing. We had to make sure that it is a very stable environment when we're back calibrating. So this is a typical gate station out west. Um, you have a pipeline coming in, it's, it's pushing about 600 pounds per square inch. And you have all sorts of regulators and valves, and you have to crank that down about 150 pounds per square foot before you, before you push it out to the uh, residence. So there's your telemetry tower, just, just piping the volumes back to your customers and to the client. There's our van driving up and down, this, down the road. And those couple shady guys right there, they're, they're actually releasing the tracer. So the SF6 is being released, and as the van drives up and down, they're, they're measuring. So again, here's, the, uh, here's our site. The landfill is on the far left. The gate station, middle top, and the road that kind of runs northwest to southeast. That's, our, that's the road that the van traversed. So we had two, uh, two trials on the 30th. We tried on the 30th, we went back and we find our data, we find how we're going to do it, then we back on the 2nd. So we have our wind direction on the 2nd, and here are the results. So the red line is our tracer element. And we see how that lines up very nicely with the peaks of the methane. So what does that tell us? That we had the, the tracer set up right at the gate, released, van drove back and forth five or six times, we took this segment of data, we're picking up our SF6, we're picking up the methane peak, so that tells us we do indeed have a leak right there at, at that gate. Um, we, we get the little blips across the bottom there in the red, and because the wind is, is not always this, it's, it's kind of rotating back and forth a little bit, so you get those little little hips and valleys. But again, we're, we're measuring it, you know, in one-tenth of a part per billion, the tracer element. So there's our gas. There's a gate station source, there's a landfill. 
So how do you calculate? You have three knowns. So it's all it's all ratio. So you know, talk to your seventh grade algebra teacher, I'll never use this again. Uh, we had to pull it back out. And this is how we calculated our release. We have three knowns. Very easy to calculate your uh, your amount. And this is what we're graphing, that that uh, CH4 release. So here's another experiment we did. Um, the, the same thing. This time we're actually calculating the uh, We've taken out the background. We've taken out the 2.1, I think, for this area of the country. So our delta methane is uh, plotted very nicely. And it lines up very nicely with our trace. So additional data that we collected in this all, all on iPads, uh, the type, the location, um, the, the different components, all, all stuff that would be very valuable for, the, for our agencies, for our client to know what do you have working with. Um, you know, this facility, you're, you're leaking this much per day, which, you know, adds up after a while. So, you know, uh, again, the mobile mapping with the hot spots, uh, using the tracer, and comparing <coughs> the data from one method to the other, I, I think we achieved very, very nice results. And I think we can present the data with a very high level of confidence. So look, we have our trace, we know, and if we go back and compare the two, we're, we're getting some numbers that are right on. So the, 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 the clients are just about set to, uh, to approve everything for release. Uh, the defense fund is very happy with what we're doing. This is just a little blow up of some of the, uh, one of the areas that we did. Typically, we have a 60 mile polygon to work with. So we, we download the road inventory, and you, you just start drawing boxes and you know, calculate how many road miles are within that polygon, and just to tweak them. And, you know, if, if you're within 3% of 60 miles, that's just fine for this, for this project. So the, the green are the historic locations that were identified by the gas company. So they were either uh, leaks, um, maybe they're gate stations, maybe they're, they're just locations where we have exposed pipe. And then the, the data underneath is as we're driving at the, uh, the van, these, this is our data points. So we want to be careful. We, we start looking at this uh, greater than eight parts per million. You know, it's kind of one of those things where you're down the, walking down the sidewalk, walking the dog. You're, you're definitely going to smell it. And that's one of those locations that the high on the priority list for our client. They'll go back right away and, and, and determine where that leak is coming from. So in other ways, we're presenting the data. Um, just, this is just a clip from uh, Arc Scene. We can see some red peaks way up toward the top right. We got another uh, area of peaks down here in the mid left. Um, we're, we're driving, the one on the bottom left here, we're, we're driving actually by a uh, sewer uh, district. Um, so we're, we're picking up the, uh, the wind coming off the, uh, the settling ponds out there. Uh, the one at the top, there, there was an actual gate station with some issues that had to be looked at right away. And again, this is just another, uh, another clip from Mark's scene. And then just some pictures of the different facilities that we, we looked at during this, uh, this program. This is a very, very large uh, gate station um, somewhere in the Midwest. So this is our uh, SF6 release. So we just set the bottle up next to a known leak. And there's different ways to find the leaks. Um, here's, here's Brian in his wazoo gear in the back of the van. Not a whole lot of room. There's probably... Uh, five or six analyzers, we're, we're piping in the GPS data from the top, we're piping in the GPS data from the front of the truck. You can, if you look through the uh, windshield, um, just beyond the rearview mirror, you can see the, the, the beam that's holding the, uh, the, the air monitoring equipment. Uh, infrared binoculars, um, you can actually look through them and you can see the methane flying out of the joints um, with those. It's, it's a very cool, scary thing to be looking at, methane just, just flying out of a connection. And obviously you don't need binoculars to, to see that you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's a problem with this joint right here. So as we, we come up with something like this, obviously it's a leak. We'll set up our SF6 right there, release, and we can determine how much they're losing uh, per day. <coughs> and at the very beginning we talked a little bit about the, the ground leaks. This is how we uh, would determine uh, what was leaking from the ground. We would set up a, a quick grid pattern, uh, lay the tarp down. We're actually feeding in uh, clean air. Well, you know, 
air from the atmosphere through the dryer vent tube. And what we're doing is we're, we're extracting what's underneath the canopy to get a measurement of uh, the methane. And there's our van. Yeah, again, we got the GPS in front. The, the sniffer port is probably just a little bit above the, uh, the forward de decal on the, uh, on the grill of the van. And this is my marching band. <laughs> we, we just won our four state championship and we'll be at the Gator Bowl, so when you wake up all hung over New Year's Day, flip on the Gator Bowl. But I, I show this because I've hired two of my former students. They're, they're very, obviously, music and math go hand in hand. But these kids are already taught to think spatially. All right? And I, I play, I have experience with the kids. It's, it's, they're fun little puppets, right? So I've already hired two of my former uh, students to work in GIS. I've got another one. As soon as he graduates from ESF, he's going to go down to our Baton Rouge office. So I really encourage anybody that's going to be looking for hiring, obviously, every criteria, but you know, just kind of float out there. We're in marching band. And if they ever were, they're probably. They're probably a little bit better students to have come on board. So with that, any questions? Yes. So who owns the data that you collect? The gas companies or do you do? Gas companies. And when they detect when you detect a leak, are are they do they contain the um, they contain the methane? Is that is that so that they can remediate it? Yes. Yeah, we let them know, especially when we had those, uh, especially when we had those, you know, over 8.4s, those were, yeah, so we would not notify them ahead of time that we were going to be coming into town. We would schedule around if they had, if they had maintenance coming on board, we would, we would work in that area with them. Because the last thing you want is a, a van driving real slow up and down the streets at night. <laughs> especially with my cohort, right? Yes. What application did you use in the iPad to collect data? Tap forms. Anybody, anybody else use tap forms? The guy up in uh, Calgary developed tap forms. It's a, it's a very easy application to build. Uh, crunch the data through macros in Excel. It's a, it's a very stable program. And if you ever have any suggestions for his application, you send it up to him, and within a day or two, he'll say it's written or he'll be down the road. But he's uh, very good at getting back. Thank you very much.